I'm glad you guys like that uh, Serum Vega Stroker video <laughs> just to pull apart. Again, it's not that I want to trash a brand. It's, again, I don't, I don't see the value. So when I start to see value, that's what turns me on, right? Like Big D Wiz gets turned on by metal base knobs <laughs> and Tiffany RCA connectors, sure. Um, I look for value, that's, that's where I come from. So speaking of which, this is the DI 1200.1. This is, um, uh, you've seen the DI series, a lot of the DI amps come in this, this new packaging, which is a little bit bigger than the original. Uh, it just provides more padding, but then of course we double pack it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here it is, very small package size. This one has uh, got the um, uh, rare 50 amp ATC fuses, which are technically they're a little too big for this fuse holder. The fuse holder is only good for about 40 amps. So again, this is really about like a, a temporary fusing. Uh, and we, we will know for sure when um, uh, Hi-Fi Vector uh, gets this one tested. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it to him anyway. Um, uh, and uh, we'll go from there and then uh, again, you don't have to wait for him to prove it. Uh, this is basically going to be the same design. This is from the same factory uh, that the uh, DI 1200.4, the four channel version, uh, came from. So we'll look at the features real quick, real basic. Uh, takes high level input, just like the kicker amp. In fact, this is what this is. This is about the size of the CXA uh, 800.1. The 800.1 is now, um, well, it, it's always been one ohm stable, but some of the older CXA uh, or CX series from Kicker have been two ohm, two ohm stable. And that's what this amp is really meant to replace is a lot of the Alpine, Kenwood, uh, Kicker amps uh, that you see that are two ohm stable, they're aging, and it, this is a really great replacement. And um, I was really surprised uh, Recoil decided to get real aggressive with the pricing. And then this one is also 109 because it's probably the same price for uh, manufacturing and the 1200.4 did so well. You guys totally sold it out. Good job. Um, uh, and they will definitely be ordering more. Buy as many as you can and then just resell them. They're really good amps to resell, especially when the customer um, isn't really concerned with price so much as long as you save them money compared to a shop. And that, that equals a margin for you and the ability to stay home with your family, which is again, what we promote. We promote value, we promote uh, being able to stay home and make a thousand a week in cash. So you don't have to go to a job anymore. You can stay home with your family. But um, features uh, speaker level input, uh, regular uh, headphone um, bass knob, uh, gain, low pass filter up to 220 Hertz. Um, let me get the focus on for you. Subsonic, keep that off. That really doesn't belong on there. And then the bass boost, you just want to be uh, kind of uh, ginger with this, uh, which is uh, a ported box should get no more than about six dB of boost. And then uh, a sealed box should get no more than 12. So just just for reference, uh, if you deal with other bass knobs, they go up to, you know, plus 18 or whatever they are. And uh, I think I can look in the manual real quick. Let me look at the manual. So what's funny is um, the DI 1200.1 is not even, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, I thought it wasn't listed. <laughs> like, good work, recoil. Um, 40 hertz is what the bass boost is at. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, 55 hertz. Um, for some reason, it's 40 hertz in the, in the two channels, uh, but 55 hertz, which is a bit high. Um, so uh, I would actually recommend this, especially for uh, uh, banda, paisas. Uh, guys that like Mexican music, these are really good for that. Um, again, you want to turn your, uh, for, for that type of music, you want to turn your low pass filter all the way up to tw 220. And then you want to add a little bit of bass boost. You won't need an epicenter with this one. So let me go ahead and get the bottom off. <clears throat> this one has switched to the new T15 uh, hardware and we'll get that going. Here are these guts. Let's get a good picture of it. Oh, I hate the way the big D says Farad. Farad, far, Farad, far, whatever he says. It's like, come on, dude. Uh, looks like just two pair on the output section. And then uh, this looks like the diode pack and then the power supply is quite large. So that's two, two, four, six, eight, eight devices for the power supply side. Pretty simple though. It reminds me a lot of that, um, the Shark 400 watt, but of course this is gonna be a lot beefier than that. 
I suspect it's going to be real close to rated power. It, it should really be rated at a thousand watts and then conservative, but I'm sure it does close to 1200 watts, uh, if not right at or right over or right under. Anyway, anyways, it doesn't matter if it's up or down, even 200 watts. Uh, you're still going to get about the same performance because remember to get a uh, 3 dB of gain, you need double the power and that's only 3 dB and you can barely tell the difference between 3 dB. Okay. So again, this is a good replacement uh, for two ohm stable uh, systems, typically ones that use like maybe some Rockville amps, uh, <clears throat> also Alpine, Kenwood, uh, and Kicker. Let me get a couple of uh, comps for you, uh, comparables, so you can see what I'm talking about. So the comparables that I found, I wanted to look through the old Kicker ZX because um, this amp is, uh, a lot of people really, really like this uh, series of amplifiers. They're only two ohm stable and uh, people really like them because they're very powerful. However, if you look at the fuse rating, 100 amp fuse rating, right? And it's CEA compliant. So it's only rated for a thousand watts. So it actually does really good for that. This one has a uh, one aught. Oh, and I talked to Wong Hai um, and I suggested to him that these DI amps carry four gauge uh, spade terminals. Uh, so that way you can run four gauge, even CCA is fine. Uh, but if you run copper, that's even better. And it, of course, also promotes buying recoil uh, wire. So 100 amp. Uh, and so it's you're like, Patrick, this amp is a classic. It's so powerful. This amp is a new classic. It's, it's also powerful and uses the same fuse rating. Uh, I would even put this up against the JL 1000 slash one. Oh, Patrick, you're nuts. You're crazy. Again, the JL 1000 slash one is only fused at 100 amps. So is this amplifier. Just look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. Don't also look at the size. So right here over, this would be the size of the uh, recoil amp. So that tells you where the the the, uh, the technology has gone. This I, I don't want. No, it doesn't. I was going to say it uses Mesa technology, but I don't think it does. I think they just use better devices. That's all. Remember output devices, uh, even in uh, CPUs, when they go down, it's, a, it's called a, a smaller die size. Um, uh, it's a lithograph. It's, a, it's the, the junction uh, measurement. They, they're down to like, I think three or four nanometers now. Not that they would use that for a, you know, something in the industry that they consider cheap or not special, like a semiconductor, like a, like a MOSFET. Uh, they would probably still use 13 uh, nanometer uh, or even larger, and it'll still make the die size very, very tiny, meaning they could put um, 8, 16, 64 uh, devices. No, I don't think they would put 64 devices, but I think they would put uh, 16 junctions in the TO220 package. Again, you got to find some channel that specializes in that and knows about that stuff. I only know about that stuff because I was in semiconductor for a couple of years when I worked for SpeedFam back in the late 90s. The other comp I found was the S2A120M, which retails for 449. Again, this is another big amp. It's a thousand watt amp, 1200 watt mono amp. Uh, I don't give a shit about your cookies. Uh, tech specs. And again, the giveaway is the fuse rating. Two, 1200 watts at, oh no, this one's one ohm stable. Mm, so this would not be a comparable. Was, again, you want to look for something that's uh, uh, two ohm stable and then fused for about 90 to 100 amps. Uh, and there's a bunch of products from older products from Alpine and also from Kenwood that would be comparables. I suggested to um, corporate, uh, which is Edge, uh, corporate recoil, that maybe we can post these for like 249 or something like that. They were no, they're like, no, fuck you. We're posting these on Amazon for 109. So there you go. And so that means you got to get it from me uh, at 105. And then uh, sometimes we also include the little extra goodies and things like that, uh, just as a thank you for supporting Robot Underground and the work that I do. Thank you very much for that. I think that was it. All right, so that's the amp. Enjoy it. I'll put the link in the description to Amazon and also the link to uh, the website. You can read more there. Uh, and if you have any questions, just text me direct 602-312-6504. Thanks.